It's no secret that I'm not the biggest fan of drop bars. I even have a whole video on why I think alternative or alt bars are better in most cases for gravel adventure bikes. But I will admit I'm not completely opposed to them. Back in my road riding days, I actually had nothing but love for them. I even think they're probably a good choice for riders who hit a lot of fast and smooth gravel and dirt roads. One thing I've always hated about drop bars though is how expensive components are along with their inexplicable incompatibility with mountain bike derailers and shifters. There have been many times in the past where I would have loved to swap between flat and drop bars on a bike based on what I was going to ride, but it was always a no-go. So when Surly announced the corner bar, a super wide drop bar meant for flat bar brakes and shifters, I was more than a little excited to get my hands on them. I've now been using these bars for about a month on my single speed gravel adventure rig, riding lots of gravel and pavement. Have the corner bars fulfilled my tinkering dreams and brought back my love of drop bars? Let's get into it. The bike I put these bars on is my mid-2000s Gary Fisher rig. It's technically a single speed specific mountain bike, but I have some narrower gravel tires and certainly Malocos on it that make it great for eating up miles on dirt roads. The installation was really straightforward, but one interesting thing is that if you're going to use a 31.8mm stem, which is basically every bike these days, then you have to use some shims. The shims are provided, but it's still kind of annoying to me and it's just one extra thing that's really not necessary. I'm guessing they did it to save production costs, but these bars list for 100 bucks, so they must not have saved that much. Surly has a whole guide on the different ways you can set the bars up, but I went for the simplest method and just ran bar tape from the ends up to the middle and then mounted my brake levers on the horns that stick out. You can make it even simpler and just put some flat bar style grips on the ends and tape the top of the bar, but I don't have any grips without a rigid insert, so that wasn't even an option for me. Once the brake levers were on, I rode the bike around for a minute and adjusted the rotation of the brake levers until they were comfortable for me to use in the drops. Given that it's a single speed, I don't have a shifter to mount, but I can't imagine it'd be hard or awkward to operate one. So that was basically all there was to my setup. But as I'll talk about next, I think there's a few things I'd change that would make these bars even better. Surly's blog on these bars say that they built the corner bar for comfort and control in two primary positions, the drops and the tops. The tops are a decent position for long sections where you won't need to access the brakes with any urgency, but it's not like they're as wide as a mountain bike bar, so I can't imagine holding on there for an extended period of time. The drops were the more comfortable position of the two, even with my dad bod belly getting in the way. It puts you in a slightly more aggressive position, but gives you immediate access to the brake lever so it feels better in changing terrain. If you've ridden drop bars before, you're well aware that these bars are missing a key riding position of standard drops, the hoods. With a really shallow drop and a wide top, the bars are definitely pretty comfortable to ride in either position, but on every single ride I found myself naturally gripping onto the almost non-existent hoods. I don't think it's just because I've ridden drop bars in the past either. The hoods just feel like the most natural hand position in my opinion. The Surly blog does show how you can make those nubs more hood-like using bar tape, and that looks pretty interesting. I'm going to give that a try, but by taping over the controls, it defeats one of the major appeals of these bars, swappability. Maybe I'm just being nitpicky, but I don't want to have to throw away bar tape every time I want to swap the bars out. When it comes to control, the width and depth of these bars gives you tons of it. One of my biggest reasons for preferring alt bars over drops on dirt is that traditional drops are extremely narrow compared to flat bars. Road bars are traditionally in the 42 to 46 centimeter range, and this narrow width doesn't give you much confidence when you're in loose and technical terrain. The corner bars come in three widths, 46, 50, and 54 centimeters. This distance is measured from the hoods, and I got the 54s and I wouldn't have it any other way. While snow has kept me from taking these on anything too rowdy, I've felt way more confident on the loose sections of gravel that I have ridden. In the past, having my hands in the drops was a bit of a nerve-wracking experience for me. While this spot gave me the best leverage on the brake levers, it also felt like my hands were more locked into the bike and would be awkward to get free if I needed to bail. The wide flare on the corner bars gives it a more open feel, so I've noticed I actually feel really comfortable in that position when things get steep and techy. So if I was in charge of redesigning these bars, what would I change? While only a minor inconvenience, the first thing I'd do is remove the need for shims with a 31.8mm stem. I don't know the last time I used or even saw someone with a 25.4mm stem, so let's bring this bar up to modern standards. The second thing I'd do is extend the hoods an inch or two. Right now they're just short enough to not be worth the hassle of taping. 
If they were a little longer, I'd probably put bar tape on them and leave enough space for a brake and shift mount that can be fully opened to clamp on and off. That would solve two problems. First, it'd make the hoods an actually comfortable place to put your hands, and second, it'd allow me to swap bars without wasting material. Overall, I think Surly did a great job with these bars. They're probably more niche of a product than you'd expect, especially as gravel bikes have become more capable, so I'm glad they were willing to take the risk to make these. While there are some things I would change, I've still enjoyed the almost drop bar experience and think they nailed the width and flare perfectly. If you're wondering how they compare to Surly's ever popular Moloko bar, the jury isn't quite in yet, but I'll be posting a video on that in the next few weeks. Quick thought before I end this video, I started this channel because I love to ride and talk bikes and share my experiences with other people. If you found this video or any of my other ones helpful, please be sure to subscribe and spread the word to your riding buddies. Subscribing and sharing really lets me know what content you want to see more of and that you're actually liking what I'm posting. If you have any suggestions for videos you want to see, leave a note down in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.